Hello everybody and welcome to Theater Tips, video number one, beginning. If you are interested in theater, maybe you're wondering what to do next. This video is going to cover many things that will help you get started, including information about community theater, information about junior theater productions, tips for before you even start a play, and fun facts about theater. Okay, let's get started with community theater. Community theater is a great place to start if you want to act. You can experience acting no matter how much or how little experience you've had in the past. You can meet and learn from new people. I've had a lot of fun doing that and I've made a lot of good friends. You can have a lot of fun, most definitely. Well, at least I've had a lot of fun. And sometimes you can even do tech and or help backstage if you're not really comfortable performing in front of a lot of people, which I completely understand. I know plenty of people that do that. And that is also fun. There are almost 1,900 community theaters in the United States. The easiest way to find the one closest to you is... Surprise! Google! Just search for community theaters near or in your area and you'll probably be able to find something. I also know people who have taken online theater classes or done rehearsals on Zoom and then performed the play in person. I personally have not tried the online things, though I have had two rehearsals on Zoom due to COVID. I can tell you that that was, well, interesting. It actually went well and functioned great, Aside from people having microphone problems and using the chat so much that it got a little confusing. I've had really good experiences with my community theater and I felt supported and it's been wonderful and I've had a lot of fun. It really is a great place to start. Here's a type of theater that I did not know existed until I was looking into seriously doing theater, but it's a great place to start, especially for people under 18 and it's junior theater. There are many, many junior theater productions and many, many places that do them. Some of the junior shows include Frozen Junior, High School Musical Junior, Aladdin Junior, Newsies Junior, The Wizard of Oz Young Performers Edition, Beauty and the Beast Jr., Mary Poppins Jr., Willy Wonka Jr., and many, 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 many more. Junior theater is amazing. The plays are about 90 minutes long and are incredibly fun to participate in and to watch. Even adults can get involved with junior theater by attending the shows or even volunteering to help backstage. I've seen and heard of adults painting sets, helping with costumes, helping be there for kids who need them backstage, and even supplying some props. All right, now you know where to go to start your theater career, so let's get into what to do when you're anticipating being in a show, which is very exciting. Number one, make sure you've prepared what you need for your audition. Usually what you need is to prepare a song similar to or in the same style of the music in the play and similar to the style the character you would like to be sings. If that didn't make any sense, that's okay. Basically just prepare a little bit of a song, probably a minute at most, I think, that sounds like something the character you want would sing. Sometimes you will need to prepare lines and or dancing as well, but those instructions will be in the audition information. More information on auditions will be in my next video, so be sure to check that out. It's going to be great. Also, don't stress about auditions. They're not as scary as they might sound at first. Number two, watch the play. Watching how different people do the play you're going to be in and how different people do the part you want to play can be interesting and helpful. This can also help get you familiar with the play. You don't even have to 
find the play being performed live, though that's always really, really fun. You can actually find videos of a lot of plays just by pulling out your phone and looking on YouTube. Okay, number three, become familiar with the songs, lines, and characters. This is important because, well, if you go into a play and you don't really know what it's about or what you're doing, that's going to be kind of hectic and confusing. And it helps to know your character, the character, it helps to know the character you want to be and to know what drives them and a bunch of different things about that. It helps to be very connected with your character. I will probably have another video on that, so be on the lookout for that. Number four is maybe even talk to some people who have done theater or have even done the play you're going to do. I've done this and it has been super helpful, fun, and interesting. You can even talk to people who have directed the play you want to be in as well. Number five, do some singing and say some lines to yourself in front of a mirror. I've had a lot of people give me that tip and it is a good tip. Also, you can video yourself and then play it back to yourself and, and so you know how you sound and make sure you're happy with how you sound. And you can also do things in front of your family and friends who can give good feedback and tips. And number six is very important. Be confident and believe you already have the part you're trying for. You can do this. And I know... Believing you've already got a part that you haven't really already got can sound confusing and like it's kind of weird, but it works. The first time I actually did this was the first time I got the lead role in a play, which was an amazing and wonderful experience. You got this. Don't doubt yourself. You can do it. One more thing about this is that waiting for a play to start can feel like it drags on forever. At least for me, so passing the time by doing other things to prepare is a great thing to do. Don't just sitting or sit around until it's time to audition, so I'm not mad at you if you do. Some things you can do while you wait are attend classes about theater, prep for your audition, there are actually some classes that are for audition prep, which you can kill two birds with one stone there. And you could even get some voice and dance lessons if you're interested in musical theater. All of this is optional, but it will all be helpful and a lot of fun. Okay, let's get going with the fun facts. Theater has been around for a long time, at least since ancient Greece, and people have loved it since way back then. There is also a lot of interesting information about theater that, though it is not necessary to know if you want to do theater, is fun and interesting. Some of it is fact and some of it is rumor. Another thing you might like to know is that a lot of plays are different from the movie. For example, in the play Aladdin, they the play has a song cut out from the original animated Disney Aladdin called Proud of Your Boy that Aladdin sings. And it also has three new characters. Aladdin's got three friends, Babcat, Gomar, and Kasim, who are a lot of fun. And there are new songs for them as well. And also Abu is not there. Sorry, Abu fans, but he's not in the play though it is still a lot of fun. It's fun, but different. And that's the case with a lot of plays that I have been in and seen. There's usually something new and different. Okay, have you ever heard the phrase break a leg? It means good luck in theater. Here are some facts I've heard about this phrase. I'm not sure exactly where this phrase comes from, but what I've heard is actors used to stick a hand or a leg past the curtain before the show started. And when they did that, sometimes people in the audience would throw money to them. This was called breaking a leg because 
the part of the curtain they would stick their hand or leg through was called a leg, and it was near the edge of the stage. I'm not sure if that is exactly where the saying comes from, but that's what I've heard. Some people even believe that it is bad luck to say good luck while in the theater. And ignoring all this, you could always just say that the reason break a leg means good luck in theater is because if you break a leg, then you'll get in a cast. That joke is from my friend Michaela, who played Miss Tenny in High School Musical Junior. Okay, now we're getting into the creepy stuff. Some people think it's bad luck to say the title of Shakespeare's tragedy, Macbeth, in the theater. Some people won't even say it at all. It's been considered a bad luck play since the first time it was performed. The actor playing Lady Macbeth actually died suddenly, and they had to get a replacement. Kind of spooky, huh? Okay. Here is a less creepy, more interesting fact. Here is a model or diagram of a stage. And do you know where the terms for the stage directions upstage and downstage come from? Well, they come from way back in the day. I don't actually know what day, but way back in the day, the actors would get up and perform with giant masks so that the audience could see what emotions they were trying to portray. I think that's where theater masks come from. And the actors would get up on this slanted stage that's kind of like the bleachers we see today. And so when they would perform upstage, the furthest the part of the stage furthest from the audience was actually up higher than downstage, which is the part close, which is the part of the stage closest to the audience. And the audience would sit on the level ground and watch the actors. I guess they hadn't thought of putting the audience in the bleachers yet. And so they just stuck the actors on the slant. We'll just give this little guy a beanbag chair and make him comfy. Though probably way back in the day, beanbag chairs were not invented. Okay, moving on. Another important thing to remember is that stage right and stage left are from the actor's perspective. So if you are this little actor or actress and you are facing your audience, Stage left will be to your left, and stage right will be to your right. This is really important to remember, and yes, I have forgotten it before and mixed up my stage directions in all my notes for a whole entire play I was in. So here's that information for you so you don't make that same mistake. Though if you do, it's completely okay. I laugh at it now. Okay, this is probably my favorite fun fact, though it is kind of a pet peeve type fun fact. Anyway, here is how you probably usually see theater spelled. T-H-E-A-T-E-R. But if you want to be picky, that is not how you spell theater in terms of show theater. Theater in terms of show theater is spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. Yes, I did get this information. I learned this from a t-shirt the assistant music director was wearing in one of the plays I did. But this is how I like to spell theater because it's fun. And it's fun to have the different spelling for the different kinds of theater. And it's kind of fun to be picky. Though I don't mind if people spell either one either way, because technically they're kind of interchangeable. This is just if you want to be picky. Okay, one last fun fact. All the theater scripts I have had 
have the end written at the end of them. So that's why I decided to end this video this way. That's all for now. I hope you learned a lot and now know how to get started if you want to do theater. Bye! Oh, and be sure to check out my next video about auditioning. Like I said, I'm really excited for that one and it's going to be really good. Break a leg!